Hello students, in this video we'll discuss a mass spring system that exhibits resonance. Let's consider the mass spring system Looks like this. So here's a wall, there's a spring, at the end of the spring there is a mass, and this mass, there's the K for the spring constant over here, and there's gonna be no friction. So I'm gonna set C to be zero, so there's no friction in this system. And there's gonna be an external force acting on this spring over here, F of T. And so what is the case when we have resonance? The case when we have resonance is the following. If we have the system, we know by Hooke's law that mass times acceleration plus the spring constant K times X is going to be equal to the external force, F of T. And so typically what we do is we divide by M, and we write this in the following way. We write this equation over here as X double prime plus omega zero squared. X is equal to some other force, some modified force, F of T modified. And... So this, is, of course, is a modif modified version of the force, modified, because I have to divide this by, by m, right? And so we write this in the following way. We write this as d squared plus omega zero squared applied to x is equal to some force f of t, okay? And now what is omega zero squared? Omega zero squared is the square, omega zero is the square root of k over m. So omega zero is the square root of k over m. And this is called the frequency of the spring. This is the frequency of the spring. Okay. Now the case that exhibits resonance is the following. If we have a very special form of this force over here, if the force F of T is A cosine of omega zero T or A sine of omega zero T, then this it is the situation where we have resonance. So this is the situation of resonance. And why is this situation of resonance? What does that mean? Well, let's examine how we, let's figure out the, the fundamental properties of the solution to this equation and then figure out why this is gonna exhibit resonance. So what we'll have over here is how do we annihilate cosine of omega, omega zero t? We annihilate that with d squared plus omega zero squared. So I will hit d squared plus omega zero squared by both sides of the equation. A cosine omega zero t. And of course, this operator is going to annihilate cosine of omega zero t, so that's going to give me a zero. And so now we have the, the homogeneous differential equation. We have d squared plus omega zero squared applied to x quantity squared is equal to zero. And we know what the solution of that is. The solution of that, x of t, is going to be c1 cosine omega zero t plus c2 sine omega zero t. And then we have, that's the homogeneous part, and we have C3T sine omega zero T plus C4T cosine omega zero T, okay? Now this part over here is my homogeneous solution. This is my homogeneous solution, that's Y homogeneous. And this is gonna be our X, hom we can call it X homogeneous. And we'll call this X particular over here, that's my X particular. And so how do we find, how do we determine these coefficients C3 and C4? Well, we have to plug them back into the original differential equation. So if I do X particular prime, X particular prime is gonna be C3 sine omega zero T, C3 sine omega zero T, plus, if I do the derivative of sine, I'm gonna get cosines, I'm gonna get plus a omega zero C3 T cosine omega zero T. That's the derivative of this term over here. Now the derivative of the other term is going to be a C4 cosine omega zero T and then minus C4 omega zero T sine omega zero T. That's the first derivative of the particular solution. The second derivative of the particular solution is the following. X particular prime prime is going to be a, do the derivative of this thing first, it's going to be a C3 cosine omega zero t with an omega zero. And then we're gonna do the derivative of this thing over here. If I do the derivative of the, of the t first in this product, we're only gonna get another omega zero c three cosine t. So there's gonna be two of these things over here. So there's two of those. 
And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have a negative omega zero squared C three T sine omega zero T. Okay. And that's good news because when I hit this x particular with omega zero squared, this term is going to cancel out with this term over here. Great. All right, so that's the derivative of the second term. Now we're going to do the derivative of this term over here. That's going to give me a what? That's going to give me a negative c for omega zero sine omega zero t. And then if I did the derivative of t over here on this one over here, I'd get another negative c for omega zero sine omega zero t. So I'm going to put a factor of two over here. Then I'll do the derivative of the sine, which is going to be cosine. So we have a negative c4 omega 0 squared t cosine omega 0 t. Great. Now, what is x particular prime prime? If I look at omega 0 squared, omega 0 squared x particular, what that is is that's going to be c3 omega 0 squared t sine omega 0 t. Great. That's going to cancel out with this term over here. And then plus C4 omega 0 squared T cosine omega 0 T. Great. And so what will happen over there is that now if I add these together, what's going to happen? This term is going to cancel with this term over here. And this term is going to cancel with this term over here. So those are going to cancel out. And so therefore, x particular prime prime plus omega 0 squared x particular is equal to what? Well, we're going to have this factor over here, this 2 omega 0 cosine. So I have a 2 omega 0 C3 cosine omega 0 T. And then over here, we're going to have what? Then we have this uh, negative C4, negative 2 C4 omega 0 sine omega 0 T. Great. And now this has to be equal to, this has to be equal to, my original equation is a cosine omega zero t. So that has to be equal to, this must be equal to, a cosine omega zero t. So that tells me that this c4 has to be equal to zero. So my c4 is going to be zero. c4 is equal to zero because there's no sine over here. And then what does my c3 have to be? My c3 has to be equal to a over 2 omega 0. So C3 is a over 2 omega 0. So we just found what C3 was. So now we have found our general solution. So what's the general solution to our equation? The general solution to our equation is x of t is x homogeneous over here. So this x homogeneous of t. And then what's my particular solution? My particular solution is my C3 is a 0 over 2 omega 0. So I'm going to have a plus a over 2 omega 0. That's my c3. And then t sine omega 0 t. And so now why do we say the system exhibits resonance? Because the homogeneous solution just oscillates up to a total to up to a certain scale, up to an amplitude of the square root of c1 squared plus c2 squared. And then this term over here is doing what? As t goes to infinity, this term is the amplitude of that expression is getting as large as we wish. So this term over here oscillates between negative infinity and positive infinity, which means that the spring is eventually going to snap because as I, the displacement is getting arbitrarily large and arbitrarily small. So what's happening over here is the spring is being stretched out to infinity. And eventually, as we get larger and larger and larger, the spring will eventually snap. So this is an example of what happens when the bridge, when like the classic example of the Coma Bridge in Washington, where the natural frequency of the bridge, which was suspended by cables, matched to the frequency of the wind. And so it had resonance. And then eventually, the spring snapped and the bridge collapsed. So this is an example of what happens when you have a system in resonance. Thank you very much.